Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is find kth permutation and it is a medium level problem. So this is basically a very standard problem and you must have seen this problem like at many places. But still we are going to discuss this particular problem very quickly. So they say that we have been given two integers n and k and we have to find the kth permutation of the first natural numbers. So like the first permutation would be the first natural numbers arranged in ascending order and we will have to find the kth permutation and we have to print the answer in string format. The constraints for n is up to 9 only. So like a very straightforward way that you can do like in this particular question is you can try to generate all the permutations and then you can find the kth one of them. So let me just show you that what I am trying to say. So for example this is for n is equals to n is equal to 4, this is the first permutation, right. Now what you can do is, there is an inbuilt C++ function. So in that particular function, you can, what you can do is, you can have a uh, do while loop and it is written like this, while next permutation, permutation and your array. So let us say p dot begin, comma v dot n. Right. So this particular snippet of code will like traverse through all the sequences and you will have the access to your sequence here right inside the loop. So if you start with this particular uh, array or vector, you will end up getting all the permutations and you can just find which one is the kth, kth one of them. So total time complexity will be 9 factorial which is obviously within the time limits. So I did not submit it using this particular method but you can try and check whether this particular method works. So for this particular problem, we will be discussing the optimized method, how we can solve this optimally. So for example, if I have this particular array, right, this, this is the initial permutation. So first of all, let us not talk about in terms of the kth permutation. I want to find out how many advancements do I actually need. We will talk about in terms of advancements. So if this is the first permutation and I want to find the value of k is equal to 1, so how many adv advancements do I actually need? I need zero advancements. So basically, I am going to subtract one from k. So that I need like uh, my answer is in the form of advancements. Advancement means I initially have this array. Now to reach or to satisfy my input conditions, what are the number of adv advancements I need to make? Right. So to find the first permutation, I don't need to change anything. So I need zero advancements. This is what I am trying to say. So initially, we will be just subtracting one from k for this particular reason. Now let us observe how many like uh, patterns to can be formed with the position of one fixed right so let's say the position of one is fixed what happens with these three characters so these three characters can place themselves in like n minus one factorial ways right so if they can place themselves in n minus one factorial ways then if the value of k is less than equals to n minus one after subtracting one obviously the value of k is coming out to be n minus less than equals to n minus 1 factorial then definitely I can fix 1 here and do not change anything else I will only need to change the things in this particular part right but let us say it is somewhat greater value than n minus 1 factorial so what happens in that particular case so then it might be in the range n minus 1 factorial plus 1 from this particular range till twice of n minus 1 factorial right so when is it going to happen so all these permutations in this particular range will occur when 2 is fixed at the first place and then the remaining are arranged in this n minus 1 permutations order so if i fix 2 then the like first order would look something like this 1 3 and 4 then among these 1 3 and 4 there are n minus 1 permutations that are possible right similarly i can place 3 then 1 2 and 4 among n minus 1 permutations again and then I can place 4 and then again 1, 2, 3 n minus 1 permutations among themselves. So you see there are actually 4 into n minus 1 permutations in total right and this is actually coming out to be 4 factorial because n minus 1 is obviously 3 right. So eventually you will have 4 factorial all the ways. So what you essentially have to do is you can uh, try fixing the first position right. So you know you can perform n minus 1 factorial operations. You can find out that which of these ranges satisfy our condition right. So we can easily find it out using 
k divided by n minus i n minus 1 factorial right so when we do k divided by n minus 1 factorial you will find out the range in which it lies so if it lies in the first range let me denote a1 b1 if it lies in the first range then 1 should be fixed right if this particular value lies in the second range then 2 should be fixed right if this particular value lies in the third range then 3 should be fixed it is like this right so the value that it is actually going to give you is in, will be in the form of 0 1 2 3 right in this particular case so by by 0 i will denote then that i need to step 1 0 times upwards that means if i need to step 1 0 time upwards it means i i don't need to make any change in it if i have to step the particular number one time upwards that means i have to move to the next number number available that is 2 right so the base idea is to realize that there are n minus 1 factorial possible combinations if my value of k is greater than n minus 1 factorial then definitely i will have to take some number other than 1 here right so it can be 2 3 or 4 depending upon how much it is greater than n minus 1 factorial right so it i can find that value by doing k divided by n minus 1 factorial right so this will give me by how much magnitude i need to increment my first value so once i increment it i will be able to find the i'll be able to fix the first position so let's say 1 2 3 and 4 were like this i fix the second character at the first position like this so i now i have three remaining spaces and this cannot be used any further right so I now now I come to the second position. So first position is fixed. Now I am currently standing at this. For the remaining two characters, there are actually two factorial ways or n minus two factorial ways. So before coming to this position, remember that we used some of the positions by doing this particular part, right? By fixing two at the first position. So what will be the actual number of positions that are fixed? So it will be equals to k divided by n minus one factorial into n minus one factorial and subtracting it from k or you can also set k to k mod n minus 1 factorial. so basically what we are trying to do is let me just explain you in a sim more simple manner so let's say n minus 1 factorial value is 6 right and my k value is let's say 9 right so i try to do n by 6 and it will come out to be 1 that means i need to make one advancement right if i make that one part, one particular advancement it will it will help me to skip six positions if i skip six positions then the remaining value will be n minus 6 and that will be equals to 3 right so you can calculate this particular 3 in two ways either you can do the first formula that i have written here that is k minus k divided by n minus 1 factorial into n minus 1 factorial right so this this will essentially give you one and you will do n minus 6 that is equals to 3 or you can do k is equals to k modulo n minus 1 factorial so this will be basically this particular value and it is also equals to 3 right so basically i am trying to find what is the base that i can subtract i need to subtract some value from k but that particular value should be less than or equals to k right that is why i am trying to find the value just smaller than k which is a multiple of n minus 1 factorial I can do it by n by 6 into 6 right so this is this will be that particular value once I subtract it and I move on to the next position now at this particular position when I am standing I see that I have two factorial ways if I fix one at this particular position if my value of k is still greater than two factorial then I will try to fix some other number right I can fix three then if it is still greater then I can fix try to fix four this is how you can fix all the values at each and every position the base idea will be the same the only thing that you have to take care of is for example we took two in the first position right now my first element in the list would be this this is the first candidate this is the second candidate and this is the third candidate so if i want to shift up zero times i will take this one if i want to shift up one times i will take three if i want to shift up two times i will take four right so this is how i will take the numbers now let me just show you the code for this particular problem so what i've done is i've initialized my answer string with an empty string and i've created a vector storing the factorial values and factor of 0 is equal to factor of 1 this is just setting base conditions and for all the other values i'm setting factor of i is equal to factor of i minus 1 into i 
and also I'm decrementing the value of k. Now I initialize my values uh, vector, so it is a boolean vector which will store which values have I not taken till now. Now I will find out what are the remaining positions which can be easily calculated by n minus i minus 1. Now I find out if I fix the first position what are the number of possible combinations that I can form. Right. Now I calculate my up value. So like I have taken this random variables. So up will be basically denoting the step up I need to make from the current variable. Right. So it will be equal to k divided by combinations. Now I initialize my value with 1 and I need to find the value up to by this particular value. Right. So if the value is 0, the value of up is 0, I will take the first element. If the value of up is 1, I will try to take the second element. Right. So first of all, before even doing that, I need to find what is the first valid value that I have not taken till now. Right. Because I have already explained you in this particular example, when I took 2, so I cannot take 2 again. I need to find the first valid value that I can take. Right. So this is what I am doing here. I am just traversing through the values array and I am trying to find the first valid value. So if it is not visited or it is not taken, you, whatever you can say, if I, I check whether my up value is equal to 0, if it is equal to 0, I just break. Otherwise, I decrement my up value and I increment my value. So this is the value that is going on from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and I am trying to find the first valid value. Now I update my k as k modulo form and I add the value to my end of the string. Now I also mark this particular value as taken since I cannot use it again. Right. And I can just finally return my answer. So the only important thing is to realize that there will be actually n minus i minus 1 possible combinations. The factorial of it obviously is this number of possible combinations if I fix the first place. So if I am not able to get the value by fixing 1, I can try to fix 2 and I can try to fix 3 and whichever of them is satisfying the conditions, I will take that and I will try to move on further with the next value. So this would be the solution. Let me just quickly submit it and show you that this particular solution works. And there might exist like other solutions as well. The most simplest and a no brainer is to use that file permutation loop and it will help you to do it like very quickly. Also, you'll have to write less code, but the complexity is very like uh, different from this particular code. This is essentially n square if you consider this particular part as well. And that particular loop will be n factorial. So there's a big difference in complexity. It's your wish. I believe that should also pass, but you can try doing that particular method also. So that, that's it for today's video. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So if you are one of them, then can definitely consider subscribing. And do share this channel with your friends. Till the next video drops, keep coding. Stay safe. Bye-bye.